Welcome back to another Animal of the Week. It's been a long time since we've covered an animal that wasn't our nightmarish demon from an alien planet, but thankfully today we are simply looking at a very cool and interesting animal, not one that gives you nightmares. Now for a bit of explanation about the dragon-headed caterpillars. These caterpillars are not one species, and they are not even their own animal outright, as they are simply a stage in the development of butterflies, so really I'm kind of pushing the boundaries of Animal of the Week on this one. There are around 400 different species of butterflies that develop from dragon-headed caterpillars, all of which are members of the family Charaxinae. Charaxinae is a subfamily of the family Nymphilidae, the largest family of butterflies. So essentially there are 400 different species of dragon-headed caterpillars, but as they are all in the same subfamily, they are all incredibly similar so I'm grouping them together into one video. As there are 400 different species of this caterpillar, they live all over the world in many different climates and landscapes. The majority of the caterpillars live in temperate zones in North America, Europe, China and Australia. Some species are found in the more Mediterranean and North African regions, some are found in the tropical coastlines of Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia, and other species can be found in the dry savanna regions of South Africa. Despite the highly varied climate and landscapes that these 400 species of butterflies live in, they are all incredibly similar species, all having the dragon-headed caterpillars and all conforming to a mostly brown or pale dull coloration. As with most insects, the diet of these caterpillars is heavily dependent upon the breeding habits of the parents, as they need to hatch on or near to a food source if they have any chance of survival. Dragon-headed caterpillars, like most caterpillars, feed upon green leaves and so they are laid directly onto them so when they hatch they can get right down to eating as soon as possible. Interestingly, the caterpillars will also eat their eggs once they hatch out of them, in order to get as much nutrition as possible so they can grow quickly. Now obviously the caterpillars themselves cannot breed, as they are not mature when they are in the caterpillar form, so they have to wait until they develop into their adult butterfly form in order to procreate. Though there will obviously be some variation between the 400 different species of dragon-headed caterpillars, the developmental cycle of the insects is largely the same and goes as follows. The eggs will be laid onto leaves by the mother and hatch in around 4 days. The caterpillars then go through 5 stages of growth called instars, growing from a mere 3mm in length in the first instar to 30mm by the final instar. Usually the coloration of the caterpillar will change as it molts its skin each time as it grows, but again the wide variety of species means that this isn't necessarily true for all of them. The caterpillar of the plain Nawa butterfly is very distinctive as it has a jet black head during its first and second instars, but then changes to a yellow green by the final instar. Once the caterpillar has reached full size, it begins to produce its own silk and wrap itself in a cocoon and enters the pupa stage, and eventually the dragon-headed caterpillar will be no more, metamorphosizing into a butterfly. The dragon head of the dragon headed caterpillar is actually quite dangerous to anyone trying to pick it up. The four spines that protrude off the headdress can stick like barbs into the skin and will secrete a toxin similar to that of a bee's sting, causing pain and irritation around the puncture wound. This is a great adaptation for surviving as a caterpillar when almost anything bigger than you will eat you, but it also means that humans must be extra careful when stumbling upon these caterpillars in the wild, as many people's first instinct is to pick it up and pet it, but this could end in a pretty nice nasty sting. Nearly every single one of these species of caterpillar is green or mostly green, which is an obvious camouflage technique. Caterpillars are incredibly vulnerable and so their most key adaptations are all to do with defence and evasion. As previously mentioned, caterpillars get eaten by basically anything larger than them with an appetite for protein. Birds, wasps, hornets, rodents, the list goes on. As there are 400 different species of dragon-headed caterpillar, it is hard to say what their population sizes look like, and I don't have time to look at all 400 of them. However, we can assume that due to the very varied environments they live in, that some species are faring well and others not so much. Caterpillars are very susceptible to pesticides and invasive species, so humans certainly have had an effect upon them. But the extent of this will fairly greatly between the 400 different species. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us. 